Hello, chart watchers, and welcome to this Wednesday, August 14th, 2019 Chartwise Women's Show with your hosts, Erin Swenlin and Mary Ellen McGonigal. So glad you are joining us today, and we hope we will see you back every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And of course, for our regular viewers, welcome back. Good to have you with us. All right, Mary Ellen, well, we have been, and I use air quotes, seeing each other a lot this past week. <laughs> yes, we have, uh, all, all via virtual, but uh, we're getting ready for our big outing tomorrow <laughs> up in San Francisco at The Money Show. And uh, I think it'll be exciting. It'll yeah, be I'm really excited. Um, we're going to actually give everybody a preview of what we're going to be presenting there. We need the practice, and I think you'll like it. <laughs> all right, well, there's... there's yeah, I was just going to say there are some uh, really critical statistics out there. The portion of the money show that we're addressing is women on wealth. It's a it's a hot topic and rightfully so. So I think you'll you'll find the work pretty interesting. Absolutely. So here is the agenda. We will start with our wisdom of the week and then we will do part one and two of our presentation. And then we will do uh, what's cooking from data farm to table. It's kind of a rough week in the market, but there still are a few stocks that we like. And then we'll finish off with, yeah, that happened. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started with our wisdom of the week. And, and actually, there it is. Super. Yeah. So this week we were given the dynamics in the broader markets and certainly the pickup and the increase in volatility. We wanted to make a point on the concept of how important it is that you plan your trade, that you have a plan of action in mind, regardless of whether the markets are trending upward strongly or they begin to break down. And then more importantly, trade that plan. Stick with that plan. Don't deviate from it because exactly. oftentimes that's when you'll get hurt. Yes. So, you know, you have to have kind of a, a way to move forward. And hopefully with our Chartwise Women approach, we're helping you at least understand how to plan a trade. And then really critical when we say trade your plan, that means you really do need to stick to your methodology or whatever your, um, the, you know, what your stops are, be true to them. Uh, that type type of thing. You've got to, um, if you're going to jump in, you need to go in with a plan. So that's kind of where we wanted to go with that this week. Uh, but with that, we wanted to explain to you kind of our approach and some of the things that we're looking at, um, like we said, on the Women on Wealth panel that we're going to be talking to. So we really wanted to let you know that what we want to do is explain to everybody how to bring women to the investing table. And it's really important, and we have a lot of great, uh, great insights to share with you. But I'm going to pass it to you, Mary Ellen, to give it a, give it a go for the first part. Yeah, that's right. So what I'm going to be sharing with you right now, and as we move on, we will get more into the current markets and and uh, creating a plan there. But this is all about women as it relates to investing in the broader markets, their financial literacy or lack thereof. So I like to start it with good news. And that's a fact that women on average, they do save more than men. They're savers, 9% of their salary versus 8.6. I think there's a bit of a fallacy out there that women are out there squandering their money on shoes and uh, yes. purse, purses, but they actually are saving. It doesn't seem like a big percent number, but over time, that really will serve women well. Uh, however, that said, saving alone, studies have shown it's really not enough. It's not going to help you. You're not going to be able to keep pace with inflation. If you're not putting those savings to work, likely you are, in fact, losing money. So, Another fact that is, this one is more commonly known, and that is that on average, women earn only about 80% of what men make for the very same job. So in essence, despite the fact that women are in fact saving more, this pay disparity is more powerful and it really puts women really well behind schedule as far as being financially secure. 
Another fact, and a lot of this came from a study that S&P Global just released last week. They surveyed more than 30,000 people in 11 countries with the largest stock exchanges. And one of the facts that was that emerged was that 74% of those women that they interviewed, they view the stock market as just being too risky for them to invest in. And this really is dangerous. Uh, if you are not putting your money in growth vehicles, you are not going to be well served, particularly for those later years. Here's a fact that came from Elvest. This is a company based out of New York City. And they did a study and they estimated that if you were making on average $85,000 a year, and if you were to wait a decade to invest, in other, in other words, you're keeping it in that savings, you're keeping it those funds in a safe haven, you're, there's salaried savings that we talked about. Historically, it could cost you over that 10 year period, $360,000. And if you take longer than that 10 years, maybe 20 and so on, that number is only going to multiply. So that is a very serious deficit that many women will face, certainly 74% that are fear fearful of the markets. So really, the next step that women need to make to ensure that their savings are invested properly and generating growth, it's really critical that women progress toward their financial goals and invest properly so that they can live the lives that they deserve. So let's take a look at some good news. This is a study from Fidelity Investments of those female investors that work with them. 25% uh, that take part in educational programs that Fidelity puts out there, 25% of those women have participated in investment opportunities that are designed to spur growth. This is that growth that I talked about. So that is very, very encouraging. The fact that education can be impactful and can help these women. So the other good news is on average, as it relates to investing and putting their money in these growth vehicles, women on average have 1.2% uh, returns that are greater than men. And I'll tell you, over time, that will compound and make a huge difference. But despite being really great at investing, women really just are not doing enough of it. And this kind of circles back to that concept of being too fearful of the risk factor. Overall, women are investing at least 40% less than men. This is on average. So the, these are very, very big, certainly numbers. And then also, uh, it, this is another well-known fact is that on average, women are going to live about five years longer than men. So what this can mean in their later years is increased health care costs. And these costs will need to be met all of this can increase anxiety, certainly in your later years, if you have not put your money to work properly in some type of a growth vehicle. And those were the really common scenarios, the commonalities uh, among women that S&P Global survey came out with some other really quite shocking results as far as it relates to women in two thirds of millennial women across the US and Canada felt that they were in poor or only fair shape financially. And all of this is leading to anxiety. But again, the good news is that education has been proven and found to work and help out. And certainly that's something, Erin, you and I have talked about as far as educating and helping bring that knowledge to the forefront, not just for women, but today's presentation is focused on that. But this concept that really taking the time to get educated as far as about the, the markets and about the growth opportunities within the markets can serve well to potentially help decrease some of this anxiety that is very rightfully in place as it relates to financial security. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it is very true that most of the people I do talk to, most of the women, they really are afraid of the risk. And, you know, I think that that uh, bears out in that 74% of women being interviewed that they just aren't interested in doing that. And I think a lot of it will we'll go into some case studies 
at uh, the end, but uh, I, I really have to say these, these are the statistics that we were reading about, that we were becoming aware of when we started our Chartwise Women show. And part of the reason that we came uh, up with the way that our approach is, you know, I mean, uh, what, uh, what is it for our, our show? Uh, educate, empower, and engage. So it's one thing to get educated. One of the things that we need to do, though, is definitely engage. You know, I think that a lot of people, a lot of women especially, are, you know, hey, I, I, <clears throat> I really need to do this, but they don't really want to take on the education and, and all of the things that are required. But as your uh, statistics bear out, it's, it's critical. It's critical. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's, and, and as cited, they're actually downright dangerous. So as we get in, you'll see that our goal is to make the approach more inviting and have it so that the, it's a simplified yet proven system that can be used to take, utilize looking at the market and then also defining your entry and exit points as well as your game plan. So all of this Absolutely. with an eye toward educating. All right, I, I'm going to steal the screen, but I, I'd have to say that this is really the main, main points that we really want to nail home on this whole, uh, on this whole presentation is that you have to stop waiting. You, you can't wait. We just showed you you're going to lose money all along the way. Maybe, um, you know, when you think about it, everybody's like, oh, well, I don't want to get in the, the stock market because it's so risky. But guess what? If you're waiting and you're not involved, you already are losing money. Good point. Very good. Yes, absolutely. So we want to help people get educated and we want to help them learn how to take action so that they can, uh, you know, be in charge. And let's face it, uh, the person who cares the most about your money is you. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's an awful lot of studies coming out too. The National Institute on Aging cites that over 60% of women that are nearing retirement, over 60% of them are very, very anxious. And it's all centered around that financial uh, stability and being financially sound for that retirement period. So with an eye toward certainly at the very least reducing that anxiety, but more importantly, providing that lifestyle that really they deserve. Absolutely. And we're, we're, we're speaking about that. And I know that looking at what's been going on in the markets this past week has been really difficult for those of us who are invested, who are uh, in, the, in this market. And, you know, it is volatile. And most of us will tell you that what you need to do is likely not be uh, trading when, the, when this is going on. And basically, now is the time to really keep an eye on what you have out there and decide whether you want to lock in some of those profits. And I would say that, you know, if you watch our show, if you watch the other shows on uh, Stock Charts TV, like uh, Market Watchers or your show, uh, Mary Ellen, The Mem Edge, mm -hmm. I mean, this is going to give you that. Uh, we will tell you at, during those shows all the time, hey, it's risk on, you know, I, I do I take on this risk? Is it time to or is this time to not? take those risks. And I would have to say overall right now with the market bouncing around as it is, you can see right now that the Dow is actually down over 746 points right now. And that's a two and a half percent drop right now. So I know mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of yeah. And I can say that MEM Ed show that I did on Monday really talks about the market. It provides signposts what to be on the lookout for and how to get defensive. So for those of you that may not have seen that, you can go to Stock Charts YouTube channel and take a look. Yep. Excellent. All right. So yeah, as you can see, the markets are lower right now. We are hitting a new low. We went, uh, we not only took back all of the gains of yesterday, but we are now um, back in the loss category from yesterday's, even the starting point. So um, a little bit uh, scary right now. The dollar, you know, right now, if you look at the dollar, it's still on a nice rise. And I think really what's um, positive right now is seeing gold also rising with the dollar. This typically doesn't happen. So to see gold um, still pushing forward dis uh, despite uh, the dollar rising, I think is good. It's showing a lot of extra buyers in that space. And I would expect to see more if we continue on this very volatile 
up and down pathway on the markets. So, all right, so there's your basic market update. We are gonna go to a quick break and we will be back and I will go over some of the all too common scenarios, the second part of our presentation. Right, we are back. And uh, just to, if you uh, weren't here at the very beginning, we are in the process of going through our presentation that we're gonna be giving at the Money Show this week, actually tomorrow. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, Mary Ellen, I can't believe it's already tomorrow that we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, exciting. Yes, yeah, so uh, we thought we would go through some of our presentation. And so we will now move on to looking at some of these all too common scenarios. And I will admit to the fact that on these scenarios, I did use uh, my best friend and my daughter as a, a loose um, case study or example of some of the women and uh, what, what's going on right now. And I can guarantee you, you know people like this. And a lot of it is um, common between ages. Um, but let's look at Christina. She is age 60. Don't uh, tell her that I told you what her actual age is. <laughs> but uh, she's 60 years old and she is divorced. And honestly, this particular case could be expanded um, to somebody who is widowed as well, because you're basically all alone. Um, but Christina being divorced is fortunate enough that she does get alimony. And so she's living mostly off of that. Um, so she's not working full time. I mean, she's pretty much semi-retired at this point. And, you know, she is managing to make it work with her alimony check. And honestly, a, a little aside that I, I want to share with you is that, um, you know, I was recently divorced about five years ago. And, you know, when we went into mediation, I actually opted out of the alimony. And people thought I was absolutely insane. But you know what I got instead? I got an extra quarter of the retirement funds, the IRAs. So to me, getting that money, which honestly, I knew I'd probably get married you know, fairly quickly, and that's when alimony ends anyway. So instead of alimony, I ended up with a nice uh, accumulated retirement funds. So Christina has this same thing. She's accumulated her own retirement funds from back when she was working full time. And she did get a small inheritance um, from the passing of her father um, and um, uh, her brother, I'm sorry, not her father. Her father is actually still around. He is 90 something at this point. So it does bring up really um, some of her concerns. And the first one is her sister-in-law happens to be her financial planner. And she is being put in a cookie cutter uh, portfolio that's basically set up for, you know, a low risk, um, you know, fixed income, um, just not really growing the way she would like to see it grow because she's almost certain she will outlive her funds. And especially if she gets to uh, enjoy the longevity that her father has, uh, she will definitely run out of funds at this point. So she wants to use her investing, you know, for income and savings. You know, she'd like to get some cash out so she can do stuff. And she'd like to, um, you know, have that savings growing for those emergencies. And a lot of it is educational expenses. She has a son, like I said, living at home and he is in the process of going to school. So she's not only having to you know, support him in the household, but also help with those educational expenses. You know, They have some money put away for that, that her and her ex-husband did, but it's just simply not gonna be enough at this point. And so she's really hesitant to handle her own investments because her husband and herself handed it over to this financial planner. And while it's helped and she's gotten some growth, it's just not been enough. And so what she considers her handicaps, and I think some of these are real, but some of them are also imagined. The first one is, like I said, her spouse 
um, handled their investments by handing it over to a money manager, which is perfectly fine. Um, but as we were saying earlier in the show, who cares about your money most? Uh, you do. And so she has this lack of knowledge she's afraid of. She thinks it's too late to learn. She thinks it's just too complicated to learn and that it'll take just far too much time. So those are her problems with it. Now, Samantha is modeled after my own daughter, who is 22. She has very limited investment funds. And I'll be honest, she lives paycheck to paycheck, barely. Uh, so of course, she's like, oh, I'd, I don't need to invest. Um, you know, when, when do I have a chance to learn this stuff? I'm trying to go to school. And she only works part time for just that little bit of money. And so she feels like her handicaps are, you know, she just doesn't have enough to begin investing. She's thinking you need like $10,000 to do that. She doesn't have time to learn is what she figures. And then of course, with the youth, they don't figure there's any urgency. They, they don't really feel like they have to figure out their financial future yet, that they just have lots of time. And then they get stuck, they get their full-time job, and now they have the employer retirement plans, which, you know, if they match you dollar to dollar, that's not so bad. But then we have them coming to the table. And what do we tell them when they come sit down at this table? Anyone can learn this. And I fully and totally believe this. And it's never too late or too early. In fact, uh, it's never too early, in my opinion. Uh, you definitely want to get out there and start uh, looking at that. You need to determine those general needs and goals. Do you want cash? Do you want savings? Um, do you just look for retirement funds? And just to re realize you don't have to be glued to your computer. You just don't. And learning the basics, and we'll, we'll help you with that. And then one of the very important ones, I think, is finding a mentor or mentors. If you have somebody who's already across that bridge and willing to reach a handout to you to bring you over, it's going to work. And so we use this chart-wise women approach. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's geared toward the new and beginning investors. And as I stated earlier, education has been proven to lead to empowerment. Yep, absolutely. And we want to make investing fun, not scary. Of course, like I said, on, on a week like this week, I'm sure it seems a little bit scary. <laughs> right. And then keep it uh, not complicated. Don't use those buzzwords. There's a lot of jargon out there that makes it seem unapproachable. Right. And, you know, uh, it, this one got uh, logged out here, but we use an intermediate term approach. And that means you don't have to have your hand on the wheel the whole time. And mentoring is super important. And then uh, go ahead. Yeah, the treasure maps. That's what we like to call our charts. You're looking for that really special special uh, looking chart that looks attractive with an eye toward those winning stocks. Absolutely. And part of that is, you know, I came up with this sim simple trading model and we call it the pink line. Uh, for geeks out there, of course, uh, the pink line is actually just a chandelier exit, but we use that uh, in, uh, in conjunction with a few other, um, other uh, indicators. And then, of course, we have our Chartwise Women show, which you're listening to right now. Right. And then educational material, we are uh, putting together a five-part approach for beginners that is very, very intuitive and informative to help people get started. You're getting expertise from two people that have been involved in the market for many years. So yeah, yeah. you can go to MEM Investment Research. There are a number of courses there. And it's all about reinforcing what you're learning, continuing uh, with yeah, workshops. Again, we wanna, yeah, we want to focus the newsletter for beginners, again, with that no jargon. And then, of course, what newsletter is complete without trading ideas? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about at the Money Show. Um, lots of fun. I can see we've already gone a little bit over time. So I'm going to pass it to you, Mary Ellen. I know you had some great data farm to table um, ideas, even with the bad week like we've had, there's always something. That's right. So let's go ahead and take a look in this current market environment. Certainly, uh, the markets overall are struggling a bit. But we can see quite simply, I'm going to take us over to this sector summary, and we'll be able to glance at some of these consumer I'm sorry, these defensive areas that are up here in the forefront, utilities, consumer staples, real estate, healthcare, all of these are 
uh, certainly defensive related areas. We can just take a quick peek here among this utility area and take a look at some of the stocks within there that are holding up well. So the first thing you wanna do is click on to that sub-industry grouping and then go ahead to that stock charts techno uh, technical rating and you will be presented with those stocks that are certainly the most attractive up here in the forefront. Again, this is utilities, a number of gas stocks and we can take a look at a couple of stocks here very quickly that Aaron and I using our Chartwise Women screen came up with uh, several names that are looking really quite attractive. This first one is Sun Communities. This is a real estate investment trust. They specialize in the aging population. It's a huge growth proportion or area. We can see the stock is extended quite simply just looking at the price relative to that upward trending 10 day, I would look for a pullback because you can see historically every time this stock does have this type of significant move, the RSI is overbought, you will want to look for a pullback. And then we'll just take a look at one other REIT stock, real estate investments. A lot of these are nice, high yielding. Another stock that broke out of this base, it is a bit extended, but right now it's consolidating very orderly and digesting this big move. Look for a pullback. And uh, this is STOR, store capital. And uh, we can see both that RSI and MACD are positive. So those are two good examples. And Absolutely. Aaron? I love those. I love the flag on that particular one. Um, that one was the most attractive, actually, um, when we were looking earlier. All right. Well, we're going to move into, yeah, that happened. Okay. Let's see if we can. Uh... There we go. Go ahead and share your screen, Mary Ellen. Sure. I know you found a pretty funny one. You're always good at that. I know. And of course, now, like, I just, uh, hmm, where did it go? <laughs> but in essence, uh, we can tell you what that headline was. And that is that there was a gentleman in China that uh, did too much karaoke. He was too into it. He, he actually was sent to the hospital with a collapsed lung. Uh, there you go. So <laughs> if you want to share, uh, yeah, so there it is. And, uh, you know, in China, karaoke is a very popular pastime. Uh, I'm not a singer myself, so it's <laughs> it's not something, but I, I can imagine he, he must have been uh, yes, singing some of those rock songs from the 70s to blow out that lung. <laughs> <laughs> I know, exactly. And we had one stock I, I, I know we were talking about looking at. Which one was that? Amgen is one. Yeah, so with this quick, in mind. We have like 40 seconds. Let's see. Here. Yeah, these are these are stocks that are targeting lung disease. Amgen is one. You can see they came out with very good numbers last week. But they did report positive phase one results targeting CRAS, which is a mutated gene that is very common among lung cancer. That's the tie-in here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other is MRTX, if we can get to that. It's a smaller cap, but it also targets lung diseases as well. So you can see uh, MRTX was the ticker on that. So the counterbalance to that lung problem for that karaoke singer, this one is rolling over a little bit. You can see that June, uh, they came out with positive results as well in their CRAS uh, gene mutation study yes. for lungs. All righty. Yeah, this one on our chart wise, you probably wouldn't want to be uh, out there buying at this point. But anyway, um, it's already time to close it down. I want to go pack. I want to thank all of you for joining us today on Chartwise Women. Please conv complete that survey as you exit. We do read every comment. And if you like the topics we covered or want to hear one, let us know. Uh, Chartwise Women airs Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. Have a great rest of your day and happy trading. Thank you.